Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of Memes of the Week. I'm basically making these for free and would appreciate any support that I can get. At the very least, give the video a like or a subscribe to the channel, or watch the Sandman 2 YouTube channel which is monetized. Link is in the description. Thank you. Also, I got a strike on YouTube a week ago, so couldn't post any content. So that's why I'm making another video this week of this type. Before I get to it, let me first tell everyone about today's sponsor, Moneyline Investments. This is a premier sports service. If you're interested in making sustainable remote income instead of women stealing your income, then this service is for you. It has a proven track record of getting its clients an average of $1,600 a month with only a $100 investment. The more you invest, the more you make. If you want to make money daily, sign up with MoneylineInvestments.com and use my promo code SANEMAN for 15% off your first subscription. If you sign up for the monthly package, you get a 100% money back guarantee if you don't profit from their three-step system. What are you waiting for? Sign up at the sponsor link down below. Anyways, now on with the memes. Today's first one is an image from Disney's The Little Mermaid. Doesn't the male lead look like he's so happy as Ariel's eyes are drifting apart on him? She actually looks like a hammerhead shark mermaid. Her eyes, her eyes, purr like the stars. Not so bright, but so far apart. It must be an edit, but his facial expression is saying, Oh my god, why am I here? Number two, we have Ben Shapiro's sister. This also has to be an edit, as her teeth can't possibly be this white. But seriously, the person that did this is disturbed, because enlarging her you-know-what makes Ben's comments seem sick and demented. Shame on you. Shame on you. Up next, we have a Vice article claiming that straight people magically become gay when drunk. If you get wasted and try and kiss a lesbian, then you know you're not gay. That's what happened to me the first time when I got wasted. So at least I know I'm not a gay drunk. Beer goggles make us interested in just about everyone in the sex we're most attracted to. This is pure propaganda. Number four, meet your new AI girlfriend. You know what they say. Two heads around my little head is better than one. But you know that if such a lady existed, you'd get twice the headache, trouble and noise. Imagine the nag fests. They'll also probably demand two alimony checks and the judge will grant their request, even though they share one body. Moving on, we have an age gap couple. As their story progresses, we learn that he's a rich real estate investor. But being with her, he's probably going to be broke in only a few years. Well, at least she's pretty much being honest about being a gold digger. Number six, it looks like Mario has actually been friend-zoned, but he has no clue that Bowser is a man in a rubber suit. I guess the princess keeps getting kidnapped because she wants to go to bed with a bad boy with an army of henchmen. But Bowser probably lets Mario win from time to time because when he saves Princess Peach, then she can use him to dump all her verbal diarrhea onto before again returning to Bowser. Up next, the question I ask is Madonna evil for supporting trans people when they go and take out a bunch of kids with a boomstick. Even her own son decided that he no longer wanted to live with her and moved in with his father, Guy Ritchie. Just look at her showing us her ageless beauty while posing with a guitar. I also see her wearing more sunglasses recently because she's somewhat more recognizable while wearing them. In all fairness, I think the guitar had STDs well before she licked it. Number 8, we have Dylan. But unfortunately for them, very few people are into trans women. It's no wonder there are so many people out there trying to shame straight men into dating trans women. If Dylan is lonely and can't find a man with her fame and fortune, then what hope is there for most of the other ones out there? But many that do get dates tend to lie about their identity at birth to obtain sex like this one. By definition, sex without disclosing your gender is deception and rape. You know it's bad out there when even the most passable ones have to lie. Number 9, we have a Washington Compost graphic showing how male virginity is up 300% since 2008. We saw Tinder in 2012, and that statistic has never looked back. Yet at the same time, female virginity is becoming almost non-existent. Also, look at this. We'll surely fall below global fertility replacement. Someone mentioned that the statistic of male virginity took off the moment the iPhone was also invented in 2007. Moving on, we have an article illustrating that we're living in a simp society. Here's a teacher that had sex with the students. Mind you, the age of consent in Victoria is 16. So that's why she probably didn't go to jail. But she was his authority figure, so if she doesn't at least get fired, then I'll be disappointed. Number 11, we have a bunch of time travelers. One male, one female, and one trans one. But the trans individual doesn't get to meet their future self, and notice the sweating on the side of the past self's face. Could it have something to do with the alphabet people having a higher rate of self-deletion? 
Notice that the male and female time travelers also don't care and are just ignoring Trudy the Transy. Up next, we have the total Oregon fertility rate, which was 1.4 in 2020. It's probably under 1 in Portland, Oregon already. That means there'll be less lefties in the future. With collapsing birth rates from Democrat states and not enough immigration to replace the population, America will probably be conservative one day. Also looks like population crash is imminent in China at this point. The government can't seem to legislate more baby making with their lame spring break to fall in love campaigns. The CCP thinks that humans are deer and will breed in the spring. The fertility rate in Chinese cities is already at 0.7. Looks like the machine is finally running out of slaves. But it's all part of the plan, as AI takes their jobs away. Meanwhile, number 14, things are even worse in Korea, as the women there are finally going their own way. First men walked away from women. Then women yelled at men and told them that they're walking away too. But the men don't care, and for women, they're just playing female chameleon games and continue to walk away into the sunset and take civilization with them. Meanwhile, up next, we have a Canadian woman that's been riding the kangaroo carousel. Now the Canadian news stations are celebrating her being in her 30s, single, unmarried, and childless forever. What a great accomplishment. She sleeps around while in foreign countries, and that's probably how she lays, I mean, pays her way. Up next, art imitates life, proving that genetics are everything. The smart man doesn't compare himself to others. He compares himself to who he was before. But that means he still might not be getting laid. Maybe get a thigh lengthening procedure to make that insult taller. Focus on working out on those shoulders and getting some plastic surgery on that face instead. Number 17 is trying to sell us on the idea of happy spouse, happy house, instead of happy wife, happy life. Maybe the women are getting desperate and trying to change the language to make the men come back. The best motto, of course, is no wife, no strife. Number 18, we have an opinion piece from Saul Goldberg, saying that it's racist to report domestic abuse if you're a white woman and your husband is a black man. She's got a black guy and a black baby. But I guess it's all good because she's still smiling. First, <laughs> first, they tell us to take domestic abuse seriously, and then they say, no, that's racist. Make up your damn mind. It doesn't matter what your race is because hitting people is wrong. Next up, if you want some peace and quiet and get the cold shoulder from your boo, just tell her the difficult truth. The woman in this picture would never be with the skinny guy in the background. Her marketplace value is so much higher than his. Number 20 shows you the difference between dating in your 20s and 30s. The Sims posting their responses below this keep saying things like, only a family matters, and saying that giving up is just weak. Giving up what? Non-stop nagathons and constant swords of Damocles of divorce hanging over your schwing schwing. Moving on, we have a woman with two vaginas. One for doing spicy content, and the other one for her husband. I guess it's buy one, get one free with this guy. Her husband also probably has two dicks. One with herpes sores, and one without. Next up, we have another spicy content producer, but she only has one vagina. Two if you count her co-star, her twin sister. But both her and her sister have had their bank accounts seized in Canada, and now have no money to pay their tax. So they have to sell their newly renovated homes to pay it. They blew all the money on renovations. Sounds about right. Number 23 shows you the sad state of the Western world. My bet is these two stole the boat and were trying to get away with it when it capsized and started to sink. And now they're smiling at you hoping that you'll save them. It's a metaphor for women in their late 30s and early 40s waiting for the good men to come and rescue them. Next up, we have a woman and her father has been purchasing her only friends content and seems to have been basically getting off, which is gross. But apparently the only reason she found it was because she could hear her mother in the background talking on the phone. It's a funny story, but I call BS. And it's probably a marketing gimmick to drive more traffic to her accounts. Of all the things that have never happened, this one happened the most. Number 25, in this week's last one, we have a woman that went through 43 cosmetic surgeries to look like a Barbie doll, but people keep saying that she looks like a zombie. I honestly think she looks more like Bride of Chucky with a narrower face. I'd gladly put on a ginger wig and overalls and make my way over there to smash her for Halloween. Just kidding. Well, at least she can probably get a role in the next Tim Burton film. So that's it for another Memes of the Week. I had a YouTube strike recently, so I'll probably do another one of these this week. So look for it. Remember, I make these for free, so donate if you can at the PayPal or Subscribestar links below for more content like this. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.